Hello everybody, Ministerum here, welcome back to Stellaris, the United Nations of Earth. In the last episode, we continued our exploration and expansion. Both of our colony worlds are fully colonized now, so we have Terra Nova, fully operational colony. The Chi Draconis colony has decided upon a name of Tinith, and it has established itself. We've got our first city built, so that is now growing. And yeah, things are going fairly well. We're having a bit of a food issue, but hopefully we will be able to work on that. We have some farmer jobs that uh, hopefully some pops will fill in. And we met a new neighbor, the Commonwealth of Man. Appears to be an empire established by some long lost exiles from Earth who left, I think somewhere over a century ago, on an old sublight generational colony ship that disappeared in the Oort Cloud and was presumed lost. Well, actually, it was several ships. We don't know exactly how many may have survived to form that particular group, but several did, at least. And the only way they could have gotten that far as quickly as they did is if they encountered some sort of anomaly, like a small wormhole or something that would have jumped them across numerous light years of space, something that is apparently no longer there, but must have been there at one point. Uh, they are not exactly the friendliest bunch, so we'll see how we handle that. We're going to want to try and see if we can grab this star system and establish that as a border choke point. So that is what we are working on. And yeah, just going to continue moving along with our exploration. All right, so Go ahead and get things moving. All right, alien writing anomaly. So someone had used a mining laser from orbit approximately 5,000 years ago to carve a large body of writing into the surface of Vega-1. The massive script covers a large portion of the planet's upper hemisphere and appears to be a short story chronicling the difficult life of an alien mercenary. Fascinating. All right, are you available to do anything? Doesn't appear so. Complete. Do I want to spend the material on that outpost? I think we're going to hold off on that. Tau City. We're going to hold off on the southern outposts. We're going to focus on getting this established. All right, the doorway. What can only be described as a dimensional portal has been discovered in a remote location on Tinith. Weather prediction algorithms noticed a strange air current, which was eventually determined to be caused by the slight leakage of atmosphere into the portal. The rate of loss is far too small for it to make any difference to life on Tinith, but the very existence of this portal raises some disturbing questions, such as where does it lead to, and could something come through the portal from the other side? Intriguing. Probe the dimensional portal on Tinith, portal research area to Tinith. Log updated. Okay. Oh, we apparently have a limited time here to do this floral study. Ah, oh, that's the Marin Karen event chain. Probe the dimensional portal on Tinith, available, finishes in 36 months. Go ahead and research that. Physics research, what are we actually researching for physics? 
by the way. Global energy management, that's ah, fine. Now we need to dedicate a scientist to this. Where is that, by the way? I think that's Terra Nova, right? Yes. We need a science vessel. The closest available is the one doing the archaeological excavation uh, in the Sigma Dracona system. All right, well, we're going to I'm going to have to pause that for a moment and send them there. Hopefully they get there in time. Survey complete. All right, that survey's done. Head in this direction. The Kuma system. There's a lot of bodies in the Kuma system. Anomaly detected. Right, we're detecting some kind of object hovering above Algorab 3 at an altitude from which, by our understanding of physics, it should have crashed into the planet's surface long ago. Alright, figure out what it is. Let's see. Neither one of these colonies have a particularly extensive agricultural area. We do have a potential colony site over here. Vega 4B. It's a tomb world. Well, that's not actually going to be a colony site for a while. Alright, suspended asteroid. The horologium reports that the strange object suspended over Algorab 3 is, in fact, a completely mundane asteroid. The odd thing is located right below it, a massive complex emitting some kind of beam that it keeps the asteroid from falling into the surface. The complex appears to be completely autonomous, and no other signs of advanced life have been detected on the planet. Who built it here and why? Anomaly detected. Have an anomaly in the Vega system. Repeated scans of Vega 4C's surface give inconsistent sensor readings, almost as if the planet itself was in a constant state of upheaval. Alright, investigate. Mandate unfulfilled. Oh. I think that they wanted more generator districts. Which would have been fine, but... Alright, we have a new election. Let's see... Kyanio Tesha is in line for a third term and is the favorite. Gwendolyn Guatkin, Arkan Lakanpol, and Gustav Kaplan are all potential candidates. We'll see how things go. Special project complete. All right. Marin Karen, pistol pondering. On a closer examination, the plants native to Terra Nova turn out to be rather dull. Some excrete pollen that have a mild stimulating effect, and they are likely to have a propensity 
For rapid genetic change, hardly impressive enough to warrant adopting as a strategic or luxury resource. Okay. Then return to the excavation site, please. Get around to that eventually. Let's see. 60 influence and 100. Yeah, build the outpost. Go for it. What are you doing? Okay, you're working on an anom anomaly. So that's all right. The fleet does need to be expanded. Alright, go ahead and... Uh, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> hmm. Go ahead and get those reinforcements under construction. Alright, we got the gene clinics. Planetary unification and additional edicts. Hydroponics Farms, Hydroponics Bay. Food from Farmers Increased. Food from Farmers Increased. Survey complete. Construction complete. Alright, a survey finished. And the Algorab system. Continue working on that. Now what I want to prioritize farmers. So now let me go into native amenities again. Term limits for president. President Keanu Otesha has been elected to an unprecedented third term. 30 years is a long time for any one person to be in office. Too long in the minds of many in the United Nations of Earth. Ever, ever since the last election, there has been a strong political push towards installing term limits on the office of the president. Without strong pushback, the adoption of this proposal appears to be inevitable. Alright, rulers will be limited to no more than two terms in office. And Kiani, Kiania Otesha will resign from office at the end of their term. Okay. But she remains president for this term. Okay. Survey complete. Alright, diplomacy. We now have the ability of creating a federation.
And we can invite the Blorg to Construction complete. a Federation, but I will leave that up to you guys as to whether I'm going to do that. I'm pretty sure we're going to do that, but we're just going to hold off for this episode. We'll probably get that done at the beginning of the next episode. Alright, Grimacing. The very geological structure of Vega 4C is indeed in flux, driven by what science officer Chu Xiong assures us is a tectonic process as fascinating as it is esoteric. What is of more interest to the United Nations of Earth is that we may be able to strategically halt the planet's ceaseless, chaotic self-transformation. In short, a near instant stabilization of the planet something slightly, if not entirely, more habitable is theoretically possible. Uh, Chu Xiong estimates an additional 200 energy credits will be needed to power a thorough mapping of planetary activity and determine the validity of what the science officer has determined a surgical terraforming strike. Actual terraforming lies beyond our grasp at present, so this is an exciting opportunity. Yep. Take the 200 credits. It failed. The crew of the Friar Julian are disappointed to report that the window of opportunity for terraforming Vega 4C has closed. Despite their best efforts to identify it in time, another opportunity is unlikely to arise for another few centuries. Unfortunate. Oh, you're done that survey. Get out there. Oh, they got that colony established. Crud. Oh, well. Still get that survey done. Get that starbase built. Alright, a small cargo. Oh, hold on. Number four, learn of a new strategic resource encountered on Sehuvis. Okay. Small cargo pod has been left adrift in space above this gas giant and has been captured by the planet's gravity well. And will eventually be pulled into the atmosphere. Go ahead and take a look at it. We have received a communique from a previously unknown spacefaring empire that caused them the Snuckle Booper Nationalist Empire. Alright. Apparently, we've discovered a new strategic resource in their territory. All right, so these guys are hegemonic imperialists. They are phonetic authoritarian militarists. And yeah. I bring greetings from Warlord Rake Kutilk Kilkek, the undisputed ruler of the Snekl. Snekla Bluber. Something like that. Nationalist Empire, respect our borders and keep out of our affairs and perhaps our mighty fleets will refrain from visiting your worlds. Uh, we are delighted to meet you. Indeed. Where are they? Ah, they're on the other side of the Commonwealth. The president has learned new skills. Now it has the eye for talent trait. Okay. This mining station is built. Initiating communications. Uh, they're demanding tribute. Uh, 
no. No. We're not becoming a tributary. Right, a discarded cargo pod was led by someone in the upper atmosphere of Vega 4 long ago. It has somehow escaped the notice of other spacefarers, and its decaying orbit means it would have been lost in the gas giant's crushing atmosphere within another few years. When the crew of the Friar Julian unsealed the pod, they found a stash of alien jewelry made out of precious metals. Nice. Establishing that uh, Federation complete. Is getting more valuable by the moment. Right, mirror, mirror. Strangely, the dimensional portal on Tinith seems to connect to a planet which looks very much like Tinith. Stranger still, there is a signal being broadcast to us through it. Put it on screen. This is Keanu Otesha of the United Nations of Earth. Who are you, portal aliens? No, I am Keanu Otesha. Who are you? We have a portal to the mirror universe? Fascinating. If what you say is true, I think the portal bridges the gap between alternate dimensions. We are both Keanu uh, Otesha, but at some point, an event must have caused our respective dimensions to diverge. Alright, amazing. Tell us how you humans fare. We should trade through our portal. Yeah, how do you fare? Much the same as it fares in your dimension, I suspect. We have spread out through space from Earth since the discovery of the warp drive. Uh, warp drive? We travel by hyperlanes. Hyperlanes. Perhaps discovering different types of FTL travel was the divergence point between our two universes? Does this mean that you are not beset by the warp beasts? No warp beasts here. The warp beasts assail every known civilization. They are a threat to all life. As far as we have determined, once warp travel reached a certain critical level in the galaxy, the warp beasts awoke and attacked. Several species we know of have already fallen, but so far we are holding them off. Sounds terrible. Can we help? Yes, we should establish an interdimensional trade treaty to strengthen both our nations for the benefit of all humans. Yes. That sounds interesting. Oh. We have unemployed pops on Terra Nova. No, we're going to re reprioritize those clerks. Terra Nova has an unemployed worker. There really isn't a lot of farmland here, but we're going to go ahead and build some farmland. Actually, we seem to be okay. All right, then. Change of plants. It's a lot of area for city districts here. What I say we should go for is generator district. Humans marrying Blorg? The Blorg due to return home soon. The situation of the Blorg human couples that have formed has taken on a new importance. Human law does not currently pre present a clear ruling on the legit legality of such partnerships, creating considerable uncertainty for the individuals involved. The Xeno Protection Lobby has agreed to 
represent their cause and is pushing for such unions to be recognized within the United Nations of Earth, though more conservative elements in society abhor the very idea of them. Should we allow interspecies marriage? Um... Yeah, sure. And Earth gets two Blork Pops. Good. Survey complete. Right. It is with a touch of sadness that our delegation to the Blorg commonality and the Blorg delegation to our state returned home today. The initiative has been a great success over the past 10 years. Both our peoples have come to understand each other well, and many new friendships have been born. We are hopeful that we are entering an area, era of lasting peace and cooperation between humans and Blorg. All right. Bunch of stuff. Xenophile ethics attraction. Trust and changes. All right. Perfect. Yeah, we're probably going to form that federation. Just need to decide on what we're going to call it. The initial formation complete. of the federation. All right, Arcturus has been surveyed. All right, I want to push out to that point. So go ahead and survey that system. All right. And the Gonj civilization encountered. We have detected the presence of a primitive alien proto civilization on Ephelion 1 in the Ephelion system. Our probes show that their Neolithic culture has mastered fire and developed a rudimentary spoken language, but we have yet to see any evidence of metallurgy or written communication. We should consider building an observation post. Indeed, we should. That's up there. Survey complete. Uh, how long do that survey is done? Oh, we just finished a survey down here. All right, survey that system. Counter in Eskelia. We've encountered some form of alien vessels in the Eskela system. These objects have been flagged as eight aliens. Alright, so there is something here. Ah. There appears to be an alien outpost here. We don't know who they are. So let's go ahead and figure that out. Well, in that case, let's go ahead and establish a starbase there. Construction complete. Unfortunately, it looks like that a colony ship The Snuckleboober Nationalist Empire and the Blore Commonality are now rivals Construction complete Wow. 
And that uh, anomaly research is taking a long time, isn't it? I don't like these construction ships. Atmospheric anomaly. An unusual global atmospheric pressure difference on the planet Terra Nova has created one of the greatest windstorms we've seen. The, whole the winds ravaged across most of our colony's infrastructure, damaging a lot of it. Fortunately, wind has been a staple of this colony's energy creation and thus provided a large amount of extra energy for us. That's a lot of energy credits. 4,357. We want to finish those surveys. Survey Done. Alright, perfect. Get up there. Get that outpost established. Alright, get down here and begin surveying. Anomaly detected. Alright, we got an anomaly. Service imaging revealed a long vertical shaft on the planet's crust. The precise right angles and unusually smooth surface suggest an artificial origin. Go ahead and research it. Are they sending all of their construction ships this way? Construction complete. We are toward the end of the episode here, so an alien empire is making contact. Let's just go ahead and go through this, and then we will see what we've got, and probably in the episode here. All right, we have the Perillion Intergalactic Shipwright Guilds. Excellent. A natural wormhole has been discovered which detected what appears to be a naturally occurring subspace phenomenon on the edge of the Markhab system, a rift in the very fabric of space-time that's formed here, creating a wormhole that our scientists, science units speculate may provide a conduit through subspace to another wormhole located somewhere else in our galaxy. Depending on where the second wormhole is located, this could potentially allow ships to travel from one end of the galaxy to the... Um, to the other in a matter of days. Unfortunately, the wormhole, like the vast majority of its kind, is inherently unstable. Any vessel foolish enough to pass through it would be ripped apart in seconds. Alright, these guys are ruthless capitalists. They are egalitarian militarist materialists. Happy greetings from Chairperson Kam Talpar, the undisputed ruler of the Perillion, 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 Galactic Shipwright Guilds. Respect our borders and keep out of our affairs, and perhaps our mighty fleets will refrain from visiting your worlds. We're delighted to meet them. And what do they look like? Okay. Unfortunately, they did claim that system. So it means we're not going to have a clean border with them, but... If we can get friendly with them, we may be able to bring them in as allies. We shall see. Alright, we're going to go ahead, we're going to end the episode here. And then we'll probably see about forming that federation when we come back next episode. But for now, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.